Blessed be God the Father and the only begotten Son of God, and also the Holy Spirit, for he has shown us his merciful love. the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Kyrie eleison. Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Kyrie eleison. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you.
let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth, ask from one end of the sky to the other, did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any god venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that, un that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have long life on the land, which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Be to kindness to deliver them from death 
and preserved them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen, chosen to be his own. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. Through him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness to our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him so that we may be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It's like an instinct, isn't it? It's the most basic and most familiar prayer that we know as Catholic Christians. And I've seen people on their deathbeds, semi-conscious. And when I make the sign of the cross, they make the sign of the cross. I've seen people who've had strokes, who can't speak, who can barely move. When I make the sign of the cross, they're able to make the sign of the cross that most basic and fundamental teaching of our faith, that of the Trinity, that there indeed is only one God, and yet three distinct persons in that one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Years ago, a missionary who worked in rural Africa returned home to England for a short vacation. And while he was at home, he happened to run across, of all things, a beautiful sundial. And immediately he got an idea. He thought to himself, that sundial would be ideal for my villagers in Africa. I could use it to teach them to tell the time of day. So the missionary bought the sundial. He crated it up very carefully and took it back to Africa with himself. Now when the village chief saw it, he insisted that it be set up right in the very center of the village. And the villagers themselves are also very thrilled with the sundial. They had never seen anything like it. It was so beautiful in their lives. And they were even more thrilled when they learned how it worked. So the missionary was very happy and very delighted of everybody's response to that sundial. But he was completely unprepared for what happened a few days later. You see, he went away for a few days to visit another neighboring village, and when he returned, he saw that the people of the village, while he was gone, had gotten together and they had built a roof over the sundial to protect it from the rain and the sun. Now you're probably wondering, what on earth does that story have to do with the Holy Trinity? Everything. Because in many ways, I think we as Christians sometimes treat that Trinity, the one God, three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that awesome, most fundamental belief of our faith. I think we sometimes treat that Trinity like those, those villagers in Africa with the sundial. It is something awesome and beautiful and mind-boggling. And maybe what we do with it is we kind of take the whole concept of the Trinity because it's ultimately we can't really figure it out or understand it, but we know it's there, it's God, and so we sort of just put it there, maybe box it in, so to speak. We worship and adore the one God and three divine persons from afar, but perhaps one thing that we don't do is apply the Trinity into our daily lives. Not the easiest thing to do because as I just said, we can't figure out the Trinity. How can there be just one God and yet three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? It baffles our minds and the great Theologians and saints of the church have all scratched their heads trying to figure it out, but can't do it. 
We won't know fully that trinity until we look upon the very face of God in heaven and live and worship and adore it. But as I said, the challenge that we have as Christians is applying that trinity into our lives, making it practical. Because it's one thing to worship God from afar, but it's another thing to also live that faith that God has revealed to us as Father, as Son, as Holy Spirit. And I think a very practical exercise that we can all do, and it only takes three minutes every day, is at the end of the day, just do a little examination of our day and bring the Trinity into it. It works like this. Take those three minutes at the end of the day and replay now the day that has just ended for you. During the first minute, pick out the high point of your day, the greatest thing that happened in that day. And even our worst days, something good has happened somewhere there. Find it, pick it out, and now, as if you are speaking to your closest and best friend, speak to your heavenly Father about that high point of your day and thank God the Father for it. Minute one. In minute two, now pick out the lowest point of your day, something that just went wrong, whether that be an argument with your spouse or a slight disagreement with one of the kids. We all have those low points. Pick out just one of those low points. And now, in that second minute, speak to Jesus about it. He, too, is our most intimate and best friend. And then ask Jesus, invite him into that broken moment of that day and ask for healing, ask for forgiveness. The second minute. And finally, the third minute. Look ahead now to the next day. Think about some critical point that you've been dwelling on already about tomorrow. Maybe it's something you're a little worried about or something that you just don't really want to face or want to do. And now, speak to the Holy Spirit about that. Those fruits, those gifts of the Holy Spirit that I mentioned last week, ask for help in dealing with whatever it is that we face the next day. As you can see, this little three-minute exercise is a wonderful way to examine our conscience and to make the reality of the Most Blessed Trinity practical, part of our everyday life, so that we're not just putting a roof over the Trinity and protecting it in some far-off place. We're making the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit a lived experience in our daily lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are now outside of Easter time, so we return now to reciting the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our gracious God hears our every cry, we present our many needs. For the church, may the Trinity bless clergy and lay ministers with wisdom and holiness, that they may guide all peoples to honesty, integrity, and peace, and promote the understanding of peoples with different cultures and beliefs. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for our lawmakers that during these election days they keep the main focus of their leadership to center on their constituents and their basic human rights of life, employment, food, shelter, and social well-being. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. May God the Father cause within us and for all people we share this universe with an end to our hatred mean-spirited words, complaining, and strife. We pray, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. May Jesus, the Son, transform our brokenness and give aid to those who suffer pain, those who are forced to perform duties that are against their beliefs, and those who are filled with fear. We pray, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. May the Holy Spirit breathe enthusiasm into our prayers, soothe the restless heart, steady those shaken in their faith, and give us the fortitude to persevere in the darkness. We pray, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish who are sharing in sacraments in a particular way this weekend, for Laura and Michael Binner who were married, for Matthew Morrissey and Jaden and Aaron Filtz, who received First Communion, and for Ryland Joseph Stefanski, and for Collins Maureen Lasky, who were baptized, we pray, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal rest upon all the dead, we pray today in particular for William and Marion Hildebrand, Tom Borski, James Nofke, for the people of Most Blessed Sacrament Parish, for those prayers listed in our Book of Intentions, those requested on our prayer lines, for the world's poor, and for those who are in most need of our prayers. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, you sent your Son, Jesus, to be our teacher and Savior. Lead us to follow him more closely and come to everlasting life. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service. And by it, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this, 
his praise by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command, and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Sing praise to our Creator, redeemed of Adam's race. God's children by adoption, baptized in St. Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Nel choir's above. 